So dealing with words means that I talk a lot. I work on words. So I don't know how to summarize it. But let me see if I would, I'll just maybe throw some one, two bombs here and there or some here and there and hope that um, um, <laughs> maybe when Pastor Sam is taking his own session, he can explain better. But the whole essence we are here today is to talk about sex and sexuality. That's why we're here. One of the one of the first things I'll tell you is that your sex your sex organs, your physical sex organ is not what defines the person that God made you to be. So if you're a man and for one reason or the other, God forbid you become impotent, it doesn't make you less a man. <laughs> <laughs> do you know wait 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 guys 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 wait <laughs> do you know why you guys are laughing you know why you are laughing it's because so 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 for so long you've thought that the power of a man is in the stick in between his legs and that is wrong so even the day that generator stops working it doesn't make you less of who god has made you to be so you think everything about you is in how many girls you can knock is in how many girls you can show that you are the boss is in how you are waiting to kill your wife on your wedding day Nguanu, the day generator is not working that means your life is ended now that's why you laughed because when god created when god created us we, we were formed into these vessels that have these sexual organs you are seeing when god created he said male and female he did not there was no male and female it was just he created them it was when he formed us, he now said, okay, you, be like this, you, be like this. In God, there is no male or female. There is no Greek or Jew in God. So the moment you reduce your, your worth to that thing you can do in two minutes, if it lasts two minutes, then you've, you've just taken your whole life and summarized it into worse than a piece of bread. You know, the Bible says the adulterous woman looks for the precious soul. She makes him less than a piece of bread. How many of you, what's your what? Well, you will carry shoulder and you look like I'm making, I'm, I am the one. I am, I am. You are not even what up to one, 100 naira gege bread. The Bible says a piece of bread. Be sowing your seed though. Sow your seed everywhere. Or think that it is in sowing your seed that you are showing, you are, you are proving manhood. It's a lie. So when I ask some of you, what is God's purpose for your life? What are you here for? What have you achieved for God so far? What will you tell me? I'm still thinking. I'm still looking. I'm not yet sure. How much time do you have? Jesus started his ministry at 30. I'm sure even Jesus didn't know it would be 33 and a half years he was going to die. So if he was waiting, I, I never had. May I first enjoy life? Oh, he never reached. He would have died without fulfilling God's plan for his life. It's not like I'm saying any one of us will die. We won't die. In short, purpose preserves. In the place of purpose, you cannot die. I told, I told my babes, I cannot die. Because purpose is preserving me. Some of you are scared of the dark. You are men. You are scared of the dark. Don't let us go there. You will watch or, or cockroaches. You will watch horror movie and for the next two nights you can't sleep. Don't let, don't let, us, don't let us watch our dirty linen. But let's just be quiet and gentle. Some of you are scared of the dark. Some of you, if they do boo, your heart will cut ten times. Boo, boo, boo. And you think that, ah, you have all the time in the world. No. You're the greatest sex organ. In short, the most powerful sex organ. is not on what is on this body. It is your mind. In that mind, you can control things. In that mind, if they move you, they move you, konji, konji. Changing that mind, deciding on what to focus on, can change the way you feel. Your, your emotions is like a us. A wild horse. You just they run about guru, 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 everywhere. Bah, bah, bah. Do you, have you seen a wild horse? A, an horse has not been tamed. At least, you, you don't watch movie. You never seen a real life. You don't watch movie. Us that has not been tamed. That's what your emotions are like. Leave it. Don't tame it. It will run everywhere. And you wonder, why am I like this? But God has given us that power to tame that horse. It's in your hand to determine my life. 
I won't let one stupid, oh God, pardon my English, one two left leg girls reduce me to a piece of, piece of bread, a belefu. Your life is precious. And the same applies to you beautiful princesses here. Your lives are precious. Don't let one guy reduce you to a basket or one girl reduce you to a piece of bread. Your life, God has more for you. Ah, I don't scatter ground. I don't quiet so. Rasta, I think you should. <laughs> no, no, the thing is actually sinking. Um, it's sinking in. Uh, both, on, on both sides, it's sinking in. Um, the same way too with girls. If you check this flip side of the coin. A lot of girls believe their beauty can get them anything. So some girls leave home without having transport money. And they stand by the wayside. Thinking that somebody will park and carry them. Why are you risking your life? Why do you want to commit suicide? As in, it, it, it looks stupid. I, I think it's one stupid thing that girls do. They just stay by the road. And they are waiting for somebody to come and pick them. I think it was um, last weekend. I was on my way to the church where I pastor. Pastor a youth church. And um, these girls were talking about different guys. Talking about different guys. I said, oh, that one, I know if you give Percy money. Then I thought, I was talking to one of my prodigy during the week. I said, girls of now, they think any guy that cannot give them money does not have a future. And I begin to ask this question. Where are the women with virtue? Life is not straight line. No. Ask them, our fathers and mothers that we have here. That sometimes that your spouse doesn't have money, you will be the one to sponsor him. Some women will buy fuel in their husband's car. So if you are a woman who have a mentality of you want to collect, I asked one of my, my wife asked one of my prodigies some years ago. He said, why don't you have a girlfriend? He said, I don't get money. If you don't have money, you can't have girlfriend. I mean, guys, are they like? Are they like? They said it's what you think. <laughs> where, where it's true. It's not every lady. It is not every lady that is after what you have. But most ladies, it is what they can get. But I don't know whether it's our mothers that ingrain that mentality in girls that make them think that they are too, they are like tissue paper. That because somebody is spending on them, the person can talk to them anyhow, use them anyhow, and treat them. And that's why so many girls fall into the hands of all these Yahoo guys. Because it's money, money, money. So girls shouldn't have that mentality. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the one that even makes him a man. You make him great. A man that will be great in this life will have a good woman. And a man that will die easily. So women, there's always a woman behind a man. Those were the women that even believed that he would die and resurrect. It was women. All the men did not believe. Forget to say, guys, they carry chest up and down. Women believe more. They see your future. Guys, all these girls you are looking at as if they are small, small girls. They have foresight to they see your future. Yeah, so they see your future. You get some of them even check. Some of them check. When they see that they are attracted to a guy or a guy is asking them, they go and check. They go to their moms. Their momsy goes to check with pastor, with prophets. And the same... <laughs> <laughs> I, I love these guys I love these guys now now jokes apart jokes apart so many young people experiment with sex and I love the way she started that what makes you a man is not your penis and what makes you a real woman is not your vagina or your breast what makes you a man is your closeness to God what makes you a woman is your discernment, is your closeness to God, your sharpness in the spirit. Because we live in a world that is perverse. We live in a diabolical world. We live in a wicked world. And we need people that can, that can get their priorities right. Your strength as a guy 
is supposed to be channeled into something productive. So guys shouldn't take advantage of girls and girls shouldn't take advantage of guys. And don't think that your pride is in your sex or your pride is in your beauty. That's not your pride. Your pride is in Christ. It's not even your material things, money, cars, all those things will go. It's in the amount of God, the things of God that you know and how well you have worked with God. That is what is most crucial. Because some guys think, oh, I have five girlfriends. That's what they are using to boast. There's is foolishness. And some girls feel, oh, there's no guy I cannot get. It's foolishness. Some girls have that belief that there's no guy. I never see that guy. Let him come from anywhere. I will get him. Once I just give him a small face like this, I go catch her. Forget, it's not every guy that falls for that. So we need to get our priorities right. And there's always, there's, there's this strife between ladies and guys. Listen, the reason, what she said, very correct. All of us, God created us in his image and in his likeness. But we have our individual strengths. What you ladies will achieve, let them put 100 guys together. They cannot achieve it. One lady, what one lady can achieve? People are looking at me already. Can, can 100 guys give beds? Can 100 guys menstruate? Are you getting what I'm saying? And guys too, they are, you know, when we are in secondary school, they say, what, um, what a man can achieve, a woman can achieve, listen, you know, is hogwash. The God that placed his spirit in a female vessel knows what he placed inside that vessel. The God that placed his spirit in a male vessel knows what he placed in that vessel. So, as a man, you sh have no basis of comparing yourself with a woman or competing with a woman. You are different. Some guys even say they undermine the power of the intelligence that women have. They say they have chicken brain. It's a lie. That woman that you say have chicken brain can kill you. This woman, God had to, God had to make Adam. Okay, if the woman get chicken brain, that means the man get waiting brain. Let's assume say na M brain he gets. God had to make him sleep, then remove something from him. Now that's the way you remove it. Say na chicken brain. Even the man couldn't be awake to see that creation happen. Yes, I love that. Round of applause for that. So we are completely different and we should respect each other. And we shouldn't take advantage of each other. You are a woman, you have your strengths. I'm a man, I have my strengths. We don't need to compete. And I don't need to look down on you. You don't need to look down on me. Because there are some things that women touch in the spirit realm. Guys, ah, see, if you want to be great in this life, you need women who... But now, boy, in my mind, they fall up and down. Imama na Orisha. She follows him anywhere he goes to. He's not the only one who I will not mention other names. Their mother is their pillar. Some is their wives. Jesus had women like that in his ministry that financed his work and he did not downplay on them. In fact, when the woman with the alabaster box came, all the men didn't get it right. Jesus rebuked all of them. She was the only one and she was a prostitute. The wages of one year, January 1st to December 31st, 300 denarii. How many? She poured the oil on him. How many men could have done that? And it's that, please don't look down on each other. Please. And don't, even look down on don't look down on yourself. Don't measure each other by your, your past. Please. The person beside you might be the next president. He no look calm. See our current president. He look calm. <laughs> no, they laugh now. No, they laugh. When I they look president, as of January last year, I was looking at Peter Obina. He looked like president. Our current president, no insult. I'm a very respectable, res respectful person. So I'm not intending to insult him. That's why I say me on no laugh. So the person beside you, when I say English never competes, you remember the wife of one of our ex-presidents? She tabo for us, she left office, she no look at now. 
So stop looking down yourself. See, the, if the Bible says eyes have not seen, that means nobody know where you go day tomorrow. Please. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's almost here. All right, so that's where we're going to stop. Um, we will have some other time together. Um, you guys, you can always invite us whenever you want us around. Thank you. Okay. Sir, Mike, sir. <clears throat> um, we're all products of one home, family, or the other. You understand, sir? And uh, we cannot deny the fact that the home or the family we came out from shapes us. Same thing with our environment. I'll give you one example. Little word as I love you. From your parents, oh, I believe in you. You can do it. Goes a long way to shape who we are. Do you understand? Now, if you grew up in a home, that that word you hardly hear it. You may not know why you are seeking in quotes for approval, for love outside the home. Now, there was an experiment that was done. I mean, wicked experiment in a hospital. Set of babies were given back to. And these researchers told the nurses and the carers to carry this set of children regularly, cuddle them and put them down. The other sets of baby, they should not touch them. Talk less of cuddling them. That they want to observe the effects on those. In no time, those sets of children that they were not touched died. Yes. So something, something has, you know, been carried by your parents, been touched by your mom, been patted by a loved one. You may not know how it affects you. A lot of us grew up all we are looking for is not even sex. It's just cuddling. Just somebody to cuddle us. You don't know why that hunger had been there since the time you were little. But the day you realize that, look, oh, this thing wasn't there in my growing up, you begin to realize that, look, I should not look for this thing at the wrong place. Do you understand what you say now? absence of God, and not some of those things, God is aware. But the beautiful thing is that when you realize that you lacked those things, once you create your own home, you have a family of your own, you know what you are going to do? You are going to be sure that your children what have those things. Because you know how it felt in your growing up. But don't seek at the wrong place what you think was not given to you in your growing up. It will damage you further. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So something like, I love you. May you not hear it from the wrong mouth. Because somehow you just, you don't, you don't know why you melt. Yes, that, I think that's the right word. You don't know why you melt. A lot of things, I mean, when you see social media, what we never heard growing up. You hear it as a matter of joke now. You talk about body count. I mean, it's it just like when I was telling you, I keep hearing the word breakfast, breakfast. I thought it was a prayer. Ma, on the altar, I will be praying that we will eat. God will, I mean, you understand? Now, not one person, not one person came forward to call, and they will be laughing. It was until when they were going to have a meeting like this. And the president at that time, my daughter, called me from the office and said, Daddy, can you get us a guest speaker? I said, okay, that's not a problem. I said, what's the topic? He said, breakfast. I said, now, now, I said what do you mean by breakfast? I mean, you know, is it that you people are hungry or what? Now, she was the one that educated me. on The lingua has changed. Now, by the time I got the guest speaker, she had to ask me, eh, Reverend, what do you mean? Mother of three. Very young children. It was, oh, she said, ah. She did a good job. 
but until after she understood. So when you hear some of those things, many of us, we are disconnected. That's why you can speak, you know, and we, we are lost. And you are communicating with each other, each other. And it's like, because when you body count, this one, this one, this one, it's not a thing of pride. And at the end of the day, do you know something? You don't really feel love. So you still look for somebody else. Because there is an emptiness you think they can feel. So you start counting, you are counting and counting and counting. And they change your phone for you. They change your back for you. They mess you up. But you still, that emptiness is still there. But I will say again, one of the things you can tell yourself, wake up every day, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself what you want to hear from the wrong person. I love me. You know, self-love is very important. Tell yourself, I am loved. Whether my parents tell me or not, I know I am what? I am loved. God loves me and everything like that. Amen. And don't you ever beg anybody to say it. Don't. Because if you are going to be taken advantage of, there are guys who know the key to use. And same thing to guys. You see the wrong lady and the guy just say, ah, ah. I don't know whether you're, you know, I mean, look at you, so slim, so tall, ah, ah. No, no, no. You know, you know, you know, you know, and then some of them even know how to use respect. They started using air for you. And so you put on subscription. You, your data, you subscribe, a phone, you know, every month. And you, and you don't have a job. So you're already paying subscription. And she knows how to get you. Uh-uh. But they like t-shirt to wear in you. Oh, my combine in show. Although it's color riot. Hello? No, we are talking. Amen? It, it's all the same thing. The Lord will guide you. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Amen? And most importantly, the Lord will make you strong. Because in these last days, the storms are real. And they are raging. But your future is very bright. Amen? I mean, those things she said in a raw way, that's the only way she can say it. Don't let those things define you. Those organs, it's not what makes you who you are. Amen? And just give yourself time. I'm telling you, a time is going to come. You are the one that will stand here. You'll be talking to younger people. That's the truth of the matter. And part of those things you are going to be using to talk to them is the experiences you have garnered along the way that life taught you. That look, there is no way there. I mean, like she, no. Did you hear her say, it may not even last more than two minutes. So you see, some of you are saying it, bo. <laughs> no, no, hello, hello. Don't deceive yourself, young man. What that is, if you don't like one hour, you started practicing now. It's deception. I was listening to a radio, I like listening to radio in the car, and that was the, the, the time of uh, this. Um, there's this cough something, this cough syrup, tramadol. I never knew that there is a, something to it. I was with a pharmacist, a friend of ours, I just walked out of the house to go and spend some time with him. We we're just together till around 10 at night. And he's in the coding, coding. And this young guy came, well dressed. He said he needed cough syrup and everything. And the way the man answered him, they sorry, uh, I don't have. When he left, I said, You are a pharmacy. Somebody is coughing. He needs cough syrup. He said, Madam alone. He educated me. Very soon there was the problem on radio. The government had to ban it and everything like that. I never knew. Then it was a radio, whatever, you know, they were talking on that. And this guy phoned him. It was a phone in something. And it was uh, just what you are doing. They were telling young people that if you need help, call this number. And the guy phoned. That look, this thing is killing me. What was his reason? He said he wanted to last. No, 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 no. Hello. He said he had been taking it from 18. It was 25 at that time. He said... He said, if you see me now, I'm finished. I am more bone than flesh. He said, but I don't even know how to stop. Can you understand what I'm saying now? 
if at this young age you need those things to last in quotes, you are sick. So you see, don't let anybody, you know, destroy your life. The Bible says you are strong already. Amen? And then when you hear some things, your generation, your internet, now, just Google it. How long should somebody last? When do, and you will see experts telling you two to five minutes. Can you understand what we say now? You read it. You read it. So you know that you are a normal person. You are okay. Amen? Anyway, what is, what, why am I even talking? It's not my topic now. Put your hand on your chest and say, I love me. Whatever I've gone through in life, God is aware. I'm a better person. I'm a stronger person. I'm a wiser person. I'm a smarter person. Whatever I've gone through, in the name of Jesus, will not destroy my future. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm yours. This body my mind, my emotion, everything I give to you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Now look at the person by your side. In case you've not heard it before, this is coming from somebody who is sincere. You are loved. You are precious. You are strong. You are blessed. In Jesus' name. Did we enjoy them? Ejekori wu. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so sorry there will not be extra time for question and answer. Or oh, you still want that separation? You still want to have time? Yeah, he's my son. He will wait. He's my son. Are you still going to the office? You are here for them. No, not now, not now. You are here for them. So you know what we are going to do? Eh? I don't know what, but I just want to be sure that you are healed. Because the day God gave me a vision, he said there are many people who come to church. They dress well, they look physically okay, but emotionally they are working on crutches. He said, minister to them. There are wounds that people can't see physically. So because of that, 10 minutes. You understand? The guys will stay here. The ladies will follow madam. Just 10 minutes. Any question, just quickly ask. Eh? God bless you. Please carry your chair. 10 minutes. They have chairs there. But it's not enough now. 